Okay, welcome to Cortina City and welcome to another Tech Electronics build. The IP solvent there. Just saving the day, hold on. Saving the day, the IPA. You saw on the last tech video the gauges and they work great. We've had them on test long enough. You saw the MP3 and that works great. We've had it on test long enough. So I can actually have music now. I've got Marillion on. Marillion on at the moment. Actually, this is my now my workshop radio for the time being. Why not? You may as well. It's a slick album because I'm on Marillion's Afraid of Sunlight album at the moment, which is a great album. So we just listen to a bit of Marillion as we progress to the next tech build. And I'll take you across to the whiteboard. Due to the success of the last tech video, I was worried that it was two hours and it might be too much for viewers. What I found was that there's a lot of tech people out there that are interested in electronics and how it all works. And indeed even can help me with some stuff because I don't know it all and uh, I just learn as I go. We're now going to do some new modules. We're now going to do the wash wipe system. I'm going to talk you through it before we start soldering away. We've got three sections in this. Let's get a pen. And we're going to wire into the car with minimal interference. There's three, uh, three or four, no, it's actually four actual modules contained within the, the same, um, not contained within the same box, but four modules which are part of the, the, the system of wash wipe. The first one and the easiest one is the intermittent wipers. Now, you may or may not know on Ruby that we have twin stalks, okay? And this idea really only works if I've got twin stalks. If you didn't, you'd be doing a switch on the dash. I've got twin stalks. The reason I've got twin stalks on Ruby is that it's got cruise control. And when I say stalk, I'm talking about an indicator stalk. Normal indicator stalks on the right hand side of the column and that's for your indicators of course self cancelling high beam and the horn we don't touch that it never gets affected it stays exactly as it is but we dual mount we mount another stalk on the left hand side of the column by using a facelift bracket assembly on facelifts you did actually have stalks on both sides but on pre facelifts we don't so we get a little bracket off a facelift car and alter it a little bit which then gives us a stalk either side of the steering column which we get we then use the left hand stalk for using control in the cruise control but also as the wiper control for the cruise control we push back on the stalk to turn cruise off we pull the stalk into the middle position to turn the cruise on but it doesn't actually activate it just means that it's now got power ready to receive the command so flipping it back it would be totally inert and have no function stalk up and then start to alt to press the what would, would have been the horn button that would set the cruise in motion stalk down would kill it flip up would go coast flip up again is resume and pushing on the horn is set so that control is totally for cruise pushing up and down are for our, our wiper controls now the theory behind the stalk labeling it even gets laser engraved with the words into the stalk so we get proper decals on there laser engraved in you'll see that on project ruby where we've laser cut into the stalk and marked the letters cruise on it now cruise obviously refers to cruise control but in, in my cortina city continental pack which i'm building we're calling this the continental pack um, of all these mods cruise refers to also some of the features which help you as you are cruising on the motorway and that is auto wipers so we're going to use the stalk not only for that cruise but we're going to use the up and down what would normally be left and right indicate we're going to use those for controlling the wiper system in conjunction with the foot pedal on Cortina pre facelifts you have a and indeed on facelifts um, as well early ones foot operated washer uh, so we're going to use the foot operated washer switch which is now marked upon our schematic to activate various features of the wipers we've finished talking about cruise now it's, that's a separate system 
from this these are a collection of four modules we're going to build so let's just say that we're just talking about pulling the stalk up and down as though you're left and right indicating okay so that's it that's what the stalk's going to do so stalk is marked up on the board okay the first and most simplest system I would like keeping it very simple pull push up on the stalk and it will become intermittent wipers so <clears throat> as I push up on the stalk it's going to make contact here for the up send 12 volts down into this little timer <clears throat> we always call our timers triple fives that's the name of the chip that makes the timing pulses so this dotted area shows one module it's got a timer in it and it's got a relay in it and it's got a timer with a variable adjuster this is on a long cable which goes by the column and it's a knob that you turn to alter the intimate interval of the intermittence so we link that into the circuit and we bring that out on flying leads and we mount it by the column so I can just reach by the column and set the intermittent wiper control the interval between wipes very simple it can be done in an off-the-shelf relay made by Hella. Uh, I've been looking for it and I think I've found one but the schematic doesn't seem to be following through it's just as easy for me to build my own but you can get a relay that will do that if you want to do this you can just get that all done it's not going to take me long to build this if I can get the relay going I'd rather use it <clears throat> but simply because it's less work however if I don't get it going I've got this system ready to rock and build so stalk goes up nothing else happens except you get every five seconds a wipe or every ten seconds depending on how you set these, this little control knob that you have that you turn to variable resistor or potentiometer and that's it that module is safe self-contained really it's, it just does its own thing nothing happens you just get intermittent wipe okay if I want automatic wipers and this, the car comes with a module separate on this uh, diagram we're not showing that just calling it auto wipe it's an off-the-shelf rain sensing pack which you put a sensor on the glass and you um, connect it up to your wiper circuit when it rains the infrared uh, scattering of the light in the prism on the glass that you fit will detect rain droplets and activate the wipers with according speed depending on the the, um, the speed of the droplets hitting the glass and the speed that the wipers take to clear those droplets so dual speed wiper controller rain sensing not included on this bit it's just a module which is off screen there for you however I want it to be activated by the stalk I don't want the rain sensors on all the time there's a couple of reasons for this um, if you have them on all the time when you first boot up the car the rain all sensor always does one sweep test and you would always have your wipers activating as soon as you turn your ignition on you could put them on the dash wiper switch but then there are only two position switches on Cortina so you'd lose part of the feature of that I don't want to interfere with the car's wiring that much so I have it on the stalk it won't be active till the stalk is down but even with the stalk down it's still not on until I press the foot switch why because of this reason the foot switch is going to be used to control electric wiper washer motor sorry electric washer motor normally the foot switch is a rubber bulb which you press and it squeezes the water out of the bulb we take that out and we just have the switch only no rubber bulb anymore and then electrical contacts go across to a wiper motor so as soon as I hit my foot on the switch it will directly uh, send power to the washer motor and you'll get water coming up the screen as soon as I let go washer motor would go off but if and only if the stalk is in the down position for auto wipe it actually has a secondary feature that takes place when you now press the foot switch so foot switch with stalk in the middle nothing happens foot switch on with sorry it'll just wash foot switch up with uh, sorry foot switch on with the stalk up would do wash and intermittent wipe as soon as you let your foot off the switch it would carry on intermittent wiping until you reset the stalk back into the center so nothing happens there but if the stalk is in the down position which is the fully automatic position for auto wipers the auto wipers won't yet come on until I press the foot switch to arm the system and that will squirt 
water on to the screen whilst arming the auto wipe so that you're not hitting the auto wipe on a dry screen accidentally it has to come on when you hit the washer that stops it from being a dry wipe and also arms the system and now the system is on because I'm going to make it so that it latches and with a circuit that even if I took my foot off the washer switch the foot switch this system's now become live and it'll stay live till I turn the power off the car turn ignition off so with stalk down auto wipe is on if I put the stalk back in the middle the auto wipe can't get through and it turns off but it's actually live as soon as I press it back down without now having to press the foot switch I hope that makes sense so foot switch locks the system in with a little squirt of water and then it's ready you can turn it off or on then all the time until your ignition goes off and you'd have to restart the cycle by giving a quick squirt of water what also happens with that is it will do a wash cycle if I want to I can do a wash cycle so um, you've already had a squirt of water you've locked the system on live the auto wipers would now start to work if it was still raining it will try and clear what water you've put up from the washer but then it would stop if it's not raining however what happens is as well as that a little timing circuit kicks in just down here again another 5-5 five, five timer this time we've got a decade counter which is a chip that counts the pulses of the 555 five, five. it's a little miniature 10 position clock counter and we use that to create our own little miniature wash wipe cycle why do we have a wash wipe cycle here's the reason it's in the fully automatic position it's going to do something to do with cruise I'm on the motorway it's chucking it down the spray coming up I've got a bit of a mucky screen I want to press my foot on the I want to um, get ready and arm the system by pulling the stalk down nothing's gonna happen yet till I hit the foot switch stalks down hit the foot switch it arms the auto wipers squirts a little bit of water then triggers a timing circuit which does a post wipe and another squirt of water or as many as we want to pick we can take it off the output of this chip here and, and create our own little miniature program almost like a washing machine timer would when you turn the dial on your washing machine and it clicks through different cycles this is its own little miniature cycle it's just a cycle of squirt wipe squirt wipe however many times that we'd want to do it I'll probably hard program it for just two squirts and two wipes with one post wipe after so the net result would be to condense that down stalk down hit the foot switch little squirt of water goes then a timing system kicks in it squirts again I can let my foot off this now and carry on driving whilst this does a little mini auto wash cycle on your screen so a squirt a wipe a squirt a wipe then let that go and that would be to save me the effort of messing around it also just gives the, the detergent time to break down any stuff and bugs that are on the screen just lets the whole thing wash a bit better than just a quick burst in my washer bottle as part of the system as part of the cruise pack you're supposed to always top up with Rain-X and a good quality um, screen wash so you always use a good quality screen 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 wash screen wash and you use Rain-X that helps with the whole system so you get a bit of Rain-X applied automatically because it does its little wash cycle you don't have to think about doing any more with your foot you can take your foot away and it'll take over you can you choose to have that if you want by the stalk you don't have to have that with the stalk in the neutral position and the foot switch activated it's just a simple washer with a post wipe that the post wipe always comes in by the way the intermittent wipe would only be on when that's up washing when the intermittent's on does not activate the automatic system just becomes very similar that top end here is very similar to your everyday car where post wipe intermittent wiper and an electrically operated washer this only takes effect when the stalk is in that down position and it becomes this auto wipe and this auto wash cycle the wash cycle only does one circuit the auto wipers would then stay on if it stopped raining everything would resort back to zero activity the wipers would stay dormant unless it starts raining again and they're already live now so they'll start picking up automatically so it arms you for the motor where you're ready to go you've joined the slipway uh, you've picked up some mud you've picked up some grease you want you about you're building up speed there's, there's traffic and road spray you want to just get on with the job 
without thinking about it one touch with that stalk down gives you a nice clear screen it also has heated jets so not only have you got all of this but we've also got a heated washer jet system I'm going to take you across to it just to break you away from that whiteboard in case that whiteboard was getting boring viewing in here should be and it is here's a, what's called heat shot so let's have a look at heat shot the difference is clear with heat shot down onto the floor we take you now onto our heated floor of course open up the heat shot box trying to keep you in shot for the heat shot the difference is clear when you open this up can we do it yes we can look at this bad boy a pop and it's quite meaty too isn't it look at that look at that i mean them cables that serious i mean i was surprised at the thickness of the cables that's taking some beefy current that's going to give you red hot washer jets it just you route your pipes through this this goes behind the dash you route the pipes through that it preheats a charge worth of hot water it's not on all the time it does it to order and you're gonna get that nice hot jet coming out and with this combination of this okay you've got yourself a really good um, windscreen clearing system that's the overview of it and when you start really thinking about all the possibilities it be starts to become a little bit more complex than you would first think however you just break it down into modules and then each module talks to the other one by breaking it down into module or schematics your brain is able to um, handle the information easier and more systematically okay that's why i've separated out this we don't need to worry it's its own self-contained system the intermittent section the foot switch and the wiper the self-contained it only really gets a little bit complex when you talk about post wipe and auto wash cycle the best way for me to tackle this project today is to build first of all the easy items and then move on to the more complex ones and get the basic item running because as you add to it you can sometimes get feedback you can sometimes get one module interferes with the other because your brain is not able to back engineer any feedback so I'm trying to explain what I mean by that you, you put this on but then you add this and you might not have realized that it causes something to lock on or it causes a washer motor to operate when it shouldn't so you have to make sure that each system is compatible with the other one and you don't get any cross interference with them and that one doesn't short the other one out or one doesn't trigger the other one because you haven't thought through the cabling and the layout so starting with modules independently running of each other on the bench then join the modules together that way fault finding is a lot easier because you can see what effect one module has had when you've connected it into the bigger wiring loom i hope that kind of makes sense i always do say to you that i hope it kind of makes sense it does become clearer when you build it um, so that's what I'm going to start doing that is the overview that's the, probably the, the second complex system after the warning lamps that we've done and they're still running lovely on the bench with no problems low fuel at the moment mp3 all done all box all self-contained complete self-contained system running perfectly absolutely brilliant can't get out of Marillion at the moment I've got the whole disc discography on here that I've copied off all my albums I've downloaded them all. I'm trying to get to drum and bass. I want to get moving. I'm trying to get to Pink Floyd. I want to get moving. That's where we're at. What we need to do now is begin the actual build. The first job I'm going to do, in fact, I'd like to challenge first post wipe. I just want to get that system out of the way. So I'm going to do the post wipe module. We'll do that. We'll do the intermittent module. Then we'll tackle this. Then we'll connect and make each one, if it needs to, talk to the other. But there isn't actually much. The intermittent one is self-contained really more or less the rest of them almost self-contained but there are some common denominators <clears throat> where I've hooked into the car take the foot switch off and it's replaced with a relay and the actual foot switch itself is just isolated and is simply a, a single one pole trigger normally that's a three pole switch our three pole switch gets replaced with a three pole relay so the relay does the action of you pressing your foot on and then you've now got yourself a, 
its own self-contained foot switch which you've isolated out of the loom by unplugging the the Cortina wiring loom off it and then making your own connection into that switch you then substitute a sort of um, copy switch or uh, um, uh, what's it what's the name for it you're sort of duplicating that with a relay putting it there and then that relay then can control the wipers that's it that's how I'm going to do it I'm going to move on to the Vera board triple five timer a 4017 decade counter and we're going to wire it all up i'm not going to show the soldering of it i'll show you when it's built and then i'll talk you through how i built it there's no point me spending time with you your valuable time watching me sold the chips in more than necessary your time's valuable i'm aware of that so i'm going to try and speed you through quick i know this was quite a bit of an explanation to open the show but i think it needed to be said let's get and build those three modules now i'll talk you through each one here we go for module build Okay, you're overhead on the tripod, pointing right through the. You're pointing right through the magnifier. The soldering iron has come in, and we are now soldering in the first of the two chips. So you can see I've already done one of those. It runs down, and I'm just doing the rest. These are the little legs of the the chips. So we just go in. And we sold it. What you don't want to do is join two together. Of course, the leaded solder is always better than that uh, horrible unleaded stuff that's out there. And the fumes are better to boot. Wow! Oh! <laughs> yeah! I compromise myself a little bit when I put you up there because I keep out of the way or try to keep out of the way so you can see little snippets of action there's two joints together but we got away with that that the only reason I'm not going as quick is because I'm coming in at an awkward angle in order to film overhead so they're in and you'll see that we have to drill little holes to break the copper tracks because these copper tracks run continuously across the uh, board and when you're putting a chip in there each pin's individual so if you didn't um, drill those tracks or break the tracks you can get a little spinner that spins it i've drilled it then the, uh, they would, it would be, you'd be shorting out so you have to break appropriate tracks to build your circuit up so things aren't to, wires aren't uh, pins of the chips aren't touching the wrong pins you always strike down the middle of a chip. So that's soldered in. I've got a few more components on there now. These are the two chips. That is the decade counter, the 4017. That's the counter 0 to 10 count. The other one's a transistor bank. Banks of little tiny transistors used for switching the relays. That's just a simple relay switching chip all in one. Instead of me having to solder 10 or however many transistors I'd use, I might only be using three or four. Um, depending on what I'm switching, this is for switching the relays on that chip can't power relay directly we need them relays toggling to turn on the washer motor to turn on the wipers but you couldn't drive that relay straight from that chip it needs to have a transistor which sort of is a miniature relay but with these handy chips here they have um, I think it's seven in one seven transistors all in one bank and it's just easy to get the outputs of this chip straight into the transistors it saves me loads of little transistors I'll show you what I mean by a transistor I'm just looking at my bench uh, there's different types this one's a high power type different, there's different current ratings of the transistors similar to relays here we are is the normal ones that I call them a BC 108 a nice tried and tested reliable transistor it's your common and garden transistor BC 108 lovely little piece of kit there it is but there's 10 of them inside that bank and the common pins are all linked up saves a lot of messing around saves a lot of wiring if you're just doing one if you only needed one you wouldn't put the whole chip in there you could just use one transistor but there's a bank of them okay okay quite a bit of circuits built and already 
tested and running. I've got the clock running. I've got the decade counter cycling round counting. I'm now just soldering in some relays. One relay will control the wash wipe together. The other controls the post wipe, the final dry wipe, if you will. So one of these relays is going to fire both the washer pump and the wipers. And then once it's done washing the washing cycle, the other relay will do the final wipe without the washer motor running. So when I'm soldering these pins of these relays now, I've got to break the tracks between them at the moment they're all as one. Really it's better to break the tracks first because it stops the solder flowing across. But you can see if I flip this round, that's how we're looking at the moment. That's the clock, that's the counter chip, that's the transistor bank which is going to run these relays. And um, 10, or is it 7? It's either 7 or 8 transistors here we've got. So they'll be going in, psych in sequence with the timer. So we can make our program by doing the jumper link across the appropriate relay we can build our wash cycle program with those there's enough transistor to build a program and get these relays to click as we want so by putting these jumper pins jumper wires across from the relays into the transistor bank we can set these that one to come on wait come on again wait and then we'll go around a few clicks up to position eight perhaps then it'll fire that post wipe and that's that cycle done. That's the wash cycle, wash wipe cycle done. It should all be in a profile. I can break the Vero and keep it in a nice neat strip by folding that over like that, maximizing the space that those tall relays take up. Let that hover over the chips. You can always pull this back to adjust the trim pots for the interval if it needs to be set. The speed of the clock, that is. I'll explain a bit more when you see it running, you'll understand it a little bit better work on the Vero but I've started in the middle really would have been nice to save the board as one but you can break it and, and use it again this section and, and that section it's just that I didn't know which way I was going this evolved as I built it okay okay well I have on the bench a working setup now powered up and running that was a time warp jump for you those two chips we discussed there they are two relays first relay here is the combined wash and wipe together two sets of contacts go into each motor wiper motor and the washer so when that active it activates your spraying water and your wiping it does it twice a short burst initially and a longer burst then seven seconds for a post wipe dry post wipe so that's the blades just clearing the last bits of mess and then it starts again short burst of water Wait, long burst of water. Wipers still going. Wipers off now. Dribbling up the screen. Dribbling up the screen, and then the final clean wipe on this one. Now those intervals and durations can be set just by increasing the speed or decreasing the speed of the clock there, or you can actually do jumper links across because we've got ten outputs, and just by combining a number of the outputs, uh, you get. A way of programming these two relays and the way they function but it's pretty much set really um, you would you would just have a couple of bursts the reason I wait it's just that it lets the hot wash recharge just for a second it gives it another chance to just recharge the hot rather than continuous run that's the idea with that we can change that interval if we wanted to and then there's about seven seconds before you post wipe you could make that eight nine or ten but you don't really want it much more than that so there's the short burst weights, there's the long burst. Again, you don't want to leave it too long between the uh, the washer bursts either, really, even though you're trying to charge up the um, the hot wash system. Hot wash system can deliver uh, the volume that this will do in one cycle. So we're probably more or less in the zone there. I think we can fine tune it if we had to. It's all customizable. This now flips over the side upside down like this. I've moved the pot to the top so that pot to the top so that 
it's not out of uh, view and you can still adjust it see how I've moved that pot trim pot there just to the top of this so that now fits like that we can break this board there break the board there and you've got a reasonably sized module it won't fit in the project box I don't think it might just squeeze in that small It'd be nice if it did I don't think it's gonna off screen while I just jump oh have I got a box now I've got a box here I was gonna I was gonna shoot across the workshop to see but it looks like oh it might do you know we might get that in there we can try so that's it really I think because I've done them yeah it's just out and it's just out that way I'd like to have got it in that box might be able to it's only that relay it's only that LED there that's really making this space I could and squash that up there look how much room I've saved that's only that LED I can move that I think with that LED moved I could get it actually look which would be good so I think we're going to go for that it's the best way to do it but there is another school of thought and that's to say that all the systems associated with the you okay can you see there all the systems associated with the wash wipe you could argue should all be in one box because we've still got other modules to build so I don't know um, whether I should just I don't know whether I should just do it all on this board and put it in a bigger box otherwise you're linking one box to the other box so I suppose I'm just going to carry on building on this circuit really build the next system in it's all in one could do that I'll give it some thought about how I'm going to plan out the next box the next module and whether I can utilize any of this to share the system in those other two uh, the post wipe and the um, the auto wash cycle. What's the auto wash cycle? Can we use the post wipe system here somehow? I don't think we can. We just need to rebuild this again for the post wipe because the post wipe really only needs one little timer, which they're already built. So really, the post wipe's dead easy. It was this cycling system that we needed to sort out. Post wipe definitely doesn't need any decade count. It's just because this needed to be programmable. Post wipe's not. It's a set time delay, one adjustment, and that is it. Keep it simple is the motto. Keep it simple always works. Just try and keep it really smooth and really simple. I think that's the best way always. So I'll look into the post wipe circuit now. The interval intermittent wiper is dead easy. So post wipe next um, on on a non auto wash cycle that's just your regular screen foot operated screen wash post wipe I hope this makes sense by the time I finish with all this wow even I'm getting confused <laughs> drum and bass on oh yeah it keeps me working I like me a bit of drum and bass I'm sorry to go off 70s 80s rock and then turn into a drum and bass fiend the building of the circuit's going pretty good I've decided to put the modules all on one board it's easier that way so we're looking pretty jam-packed in here you're gonna wonder what the heck's going on but don't you worry we'll talk you through it outlined in blue is the intermittent wiper circuit almost isolated from the rest of the circuit by the uh, supply rail to it the 12 volt feed to it in the middle in the, the orange pen we've got the automatic wash cycle and then to the right we're now going to have the post wash delay when you're not in the automatic mode we'll explain how everything works later on but three systems as discussed on the board so we've stuck to our plan we've kept to the schematic so now I'm just doing some last minute sketching out of how I'm going to do this post wipe post wash wipe so we just want to get it so that when you hit your foot on the washer switch on the floor it then as soon as you release release the washers you could have your foot on for five minutes it won't start counting until your foot comes off the washer pedal then it begins to count maybe 10 seconds six seconds before it does the post wipe and that's it until you hit that uh, washer again so I've got to build that I've kind of like sketched it out 
these diagrams here were to help me plan out some of the outputs when doing the programming. These wires down the side of the programming links to give me the time and duration and uh, interval of these. There's a washer and a wiper relay there that does both. There's a wipe only, that's post wipe in the automatic system, and then a wipe only for intermittent. It's actually up and running. Power up. At the moment, the intermittent's on, but that would have a switch on the stalk. I'm just running it now for testing. This goes near your steering column. You turn that, that dial, turn the dial, and you'll adjust the speed or interval of the in, in, intermittent wipers and that simply parallels across the foot switch contact so it's dead straightforward that a triple five timer a friendly little timing chip tried and tested there it is timing capacitor there this little fella is the transistor which switches this relay that chip could not directly turn this off and on it needs to have some help with this transistor which just is really just like a miniature relay this little adjustment trimming pot is the on time just to get it right uh, so that it's enough to trigger the, the uh, wipers getting past the parking sensor on the wipers and the wiper motion itself so that's the duration like, like mark space ratio they call it the amount of time on the amount of time off and then the frequency in between and then that trim pot there is for adjusting the actual cycle of the automatic wash pretty much are going to stay set we can trigger an auto wash now this will keep on running but this normally wouldn't happen you normally have that separate just here is the trigger wire place onto 12 volts just there this cycle will then start I'm on now so it'll trigger washing now so you're washing the screen and wiping it waits wash and wipe again for a little bit longer this time and then after it's done, this is post wipe is going to be next. Post wipe, then resets the whole system and it's, it's off until I re-trigger it with this, which was what would be my foot pedal switch. Do it again. Foot pedal switch goes on. 12 volts. System becomes active. Wash and wipe. Wait. Wash and wipe for a bit longer. and then post wipe any second there you go that's self-contained circuit here just ticking away of course is intermittent it would that would not be on because the stalk needs to push up for intermittent down for the wash cycle if you trigger it so the wire can never be on both you can never have power on both those at the same time because of the stalk stops that from happening I mean, it wouldn't be a problem if they did both become live at once. All you'd happen is it'd be trying to control the wipers in different ways. That's all. So I've been making a special effort to keep the camera as steady as possible as I can. It's really hard for me, this, because I've got a film close up. I have got a tripod. Here's the tripod, and we do go on that from time to time. But because I'm designing as I go, I'm trying to film as I go, so you get some sense of evolution with it rather than just jump into it like I have just jumped to this almost built and you've missed everything in between but if I was to explain as I'm going along first I'm not quite sure what I'm doing it's evolving as I go and secondly the amount of raw footage it takes up and YouTube can quickly become a two hour hardcore tech video which is not for everybody and for me it's very labor intensive for a very very limited return you just don't get anything out of YouTube and then you're asked to improve the film when you've done it all for nothing in the first place and got nothing back for it. It's just, just not viable. So I'm just going to get whatever I can and mix it in with the rest of the stuff. Simply speaking, you know, when you get into electronics and you're making explanations and you're planning stuff out, then you're posting to YouTube. The market is different than if it's cars. It becomes hardcore electronics and the channel's really a restoration channel for cars. So I'm trying to limit... The amount of tech stuff well a lot of people appreciate it and, I, and thanks for that I can't do the full build of this it would take hours of editing 
and showing you every single step, every little jumper wire, what it does. So I can just give you a quick overview, that's all I can do. If you are asking, there's two relays here, these are latching. Relay is part of the cycle itself, it uh, latches on, does its cycle, then it delatches itself. It's a safety feature, a cutout feature. The chips that we use for this are just under there, we talked about them. 4017 decade and a transistor array. That's it. That's my wash wipe module two thirds built. I shall carry on building it now. It's post washer motor wipe delay. Well, <clears throat> if I look worn out, probably do, probably don't. It's because we've been full on with the electronics or a wash wipe build. So, I'm going to give you an update. Reach across here and get our board, our planning board. This was the plan to build the automated wiper system, which we talked about when I zoomed you in on, on that board. Well, on the bench, I'm going to turn the tripod around now. And we're going to go in, have a little look. It seems to all be running, which is good, but it took some uh, it it took some doing. Oh my god! Uh, there was all sorts of sketches made. Uh, what else was made? A lot of sketches. Um, what did I do? I built it as I went along. I knew from that schematic what I, I wanted it to approximately achieve. It was initially going to be. A module about this big. Uh, you better come and have a look. Okay, so you're nicely set up for us to inspect this module now. Let me just dodge around the uh, camera. We'll set you up nice and steady on the tripod today. You're looking at it at a slight angle, a 45 degree pitch on the bench. Just a piece of backing card at the back there to uh, just give you a good background and have any obstacles distracting you on the workbench. So this was originally going to be a, well it still is, it was originally going to be just a small module in the middle around that size there but it ended up being this. And what you've got here is all three of the wash wipe systems which I went through with you on that whiteboard all on one circuit board so we're going to need a box to put this in, we only need a, a, um, a squat box, not very tall, but obviously that approximate board width, which you can get because this is a standard Vero. This <clears throat> Vero is the higher quality Vero. I fully, fully recommend that. I fully recommend it because the cheap Vero board, the tracks lift off and it burns dead easy. This stuff's a lot tougher, and it's just got a better finish on the tracks. And sometimes if you accidentally bridge across your Vero track, this, you can kind of like drag it the solder along and it sort of de, it sort of de, de clears itself, not de clears it, but it, it um, unbridges itself is what I meant to say then. Anyway, that aside, other than the components and the Vero board, we've got the three sub systems which we talked about. One is here on the um, left. And that's just the intermittent wipe path. I've highlighted that in blue. And what happens with that is, we'll switch it on. If I power up, it'll start going. Yeah, it's actually going to have a control switch on it at the moment. It's not. It's wired on permanent. So ignore the fact that it's wired on permanent. So that clicks a relay, just like you would with your intermittent on your car. And yeah, as I say, you can get a already off the shelf unit that does exactly what this does in this blue box but I had the parts on the bench and I've just built it all into this it's just kept it neater as well if I had um, a little relay which was an intermittent relay which you can buy I'd have had to fit it somewhere but I was there I was building I was in the mood and it's variable speed so coming to your screen there is the this will be mounted on the column of the steering and I can turn this at the moment it's actually the wrong potentiometer, we need a 1 meg pot, we're on a 220k pot, we don't get much of a range, but you'll see that slowed down now, you're flashing just in the top, I think, are you in there? I think you are, we're a bit more at the rate of a, 
I like a little bit more scope on that. So this wire gets extended and then you've got yourself an intermittent wipe system. The contacts of this relay, which you can hear clicking, go in parallel with the existing switch in the car. So you don't interfere with the wire and you're piggying back on top. That is the end of that. It's nothing else on that board. Forget looking at anything else at the moment. That's just a click time and that is it. Firing the relay, goes across the contacts of your wiper switch, creates intermittent delay. The switch to turn it off and on, I'm fitting on my stalk, on my left hand stalk, because I'm adding a stalk, I told you about that before. So I'm going to push, pull up on the stalk, let's say the screwdriver is the stalk, here we are, up we go, with the intermittent. And the stalks aren't self-cancelling, because you have to remove the little tabs, if there's anyone that was asked, well your stalk will keep clicking down like an indicator would, will you take the self-cancelling tabs off? So up on the stalk gives us this, and that's the end of that. If I click the stalk to the middle position, intermittent goes off. End of. That's it. Now then, another module circled in red then on your screens, everybody. You can see a total of three relay, well, five relays actually. There's the relays there. There's two more slave relays at the bottom. Two chips on it. Again, we've talked about this. I might be going over what I've already said earlier, so apologies for that. Sometimes when we get a couple of days between vids, you forget if you've said something. I try and make notes. Two chips. One 4017 chip, decade counter. That counts to 10 on the pins. And the other chip, it's not so much really a chip. It's an array of transistors called a, a, um, a Darlington array. Darlington pair. It's just two transistors linked to make a Darlington pair, all built into a chip. That's used for controlling and switching the relays themselves. The microchip can't push enough power out to switch a relay on. So whilst the microchip's happily clicking away with its little digits, it can't drive the relays that we want. It needs help from a transistor, which is again a miniature switch, which helps increase the power output. You could the chip designers could have built a chip that was able to to, to do a direct drive, and they're called custom chips, which manufacturers get made. But this is off-the-shelf stuff for you to build your own components. So this is um, these are just logic signals, off and on signals, either zero or um, one, ground or low is how it works. That goes into the Darlington array, and then the relay switch. And all that's happening is the relays are switching in a certain combination, which I've programmed, well, not so much programmed, but hardwired in. We have. A washer pump in the car, it's by your foot, by the uh, the brake pedal. Cortinas have them. I don't use the squidgy bulb anymore, it gets disconnected, an electric motor is fitted. A squirty motor, washer motor, washer pump. We want that to activate the um, wipers, the washers, and the automatic rain sensing wiper circuit needs to become live. I don't have the auto wipers, the rain sensing wipers, the, which we're going to be fitting on all the time, although they are controlled by pulling the stalk down, at this point if nothing's active the automatic rain sensors are, are idle. So stalk down is your automatic position but until I press the washer jet pedal they don't become on board. The reason for that is you don't, sometimes if there's dirt and muck on your screen they'll try and drop, wipe dry so I like to get it so that the module first squirts water up then, then activates this system and if it if it if it if it is raining if it needs to clean the screen the white the auto the rain sensing pad will pick up and wash the screen wet it may be that when you pull the stalk down and hit the washer jet the washer jet goes up and the rain sensors don't see that and don't actually come on that's where the rest of the program comes in if the rain sensors don't see the washer jets for whatever reason because they are particular about the uh, the droplet pattern this system will go through a process of wash of uh, doing two squirts of water, which is preheated by the way, because we've got a hot wash system on this. So preheated hot water gets squirted to the window twice, and then at the same time it wipes the window. Then it waits about six seconds, and it gives a dry wipe at the end. All the time, the automatic rain sensors are actually now become active and are looking for any pattern on the screen. And if indeed it finds that that wash pattern um, flags up as rain, it'll actually wipe as well as this automatic wipe relay here. So this will wipe anyway, regardless of the rain sensor, what the rain sensor is doing. But if the rain sensor also agrees 
and thinks, yeah, that looks like rain droplets, even though it's the washer jet, it will come on in tandem with this. In fact, it might even come on between the circuits. So, when I start the program by putting 12 volts to this wire, which would have simulated me pressing the foot washer jet pump, the cycle, the system will come on. It will arm up, start counting by counting these little pulses here on this little clock. This is the clock's the key to it. It'll start to take note of this clock and count. As it counts, that chip has little pins which go high, low, high, low in a sequence like Knight Rider. Up like that, back, and up like that. Um, it doesn't actually follow the exact Knight Rider pattern, but you can make it to do that if you, because you, you can use these to do LED um, flashing lights on Christmas trees, whatever you want. The totally universal chip. To get it to, to come back on a night ride, you'd have two chips, one wide the other way around. This one goes up and then it goes back from the beginning so you don't get a back sweep. But that's all that's doing. It's Each time that's flashing, one of them pins goes 12 volt, then it goes off, then the ne one next to it goes 12. So if by putting in little link wires, it almost creates different time circuits. So let's say this LED is flashing once a second, one hertz, then these pins are moving upward once every second so the first pin's going to be off this comes on that goes 12 then it goes off one second later the one next to it's gone on then that goes off and then the next one goes on and 10 seconds would be the 10th pin so you can actually use it to make time circuits depending on what you can set your clock at so i just pick different points for these relays to come in let's say i want the wash the washer motor on first i'm going to be picking pin pin one because it comes on straight away and then if I want it still on after two seconds in this case we're longer than a second let's let's call it multiples of two seconds on each pin so four seconds on the next pin you can loop them together with a diode and it'll hold this really for four seconds then when it gets to the fifth pin the third pin sorry because two four that's six seconds on the third pin this would then click off and perhaps we'd like a just a, a two second break before um, it does one more burst of water, then going through it again, then perhaps a six second break. If you're not run out of digits, you can get it to do the post wipe, which is that relay. So that's how I did it. Two bursts on here, waits a little bit, then a final dry wipe there. That's all that does. And at the same time this is going on, it locks a relay on here, which is the arm relay for the rain sensing wiper. So I'll pull down on the stalk, which makes this ready to receive the signal it'll then receive the signal because i'll press the washer pump it'll then squirt twice a short burst first wait burst again post wipe after four or five seconds i think i've set it for and then of course this this will lock on earlier on in the cycle so that the rain sensing wipers are actually armed and ready to be searching in case the, the washer jets spray up that far but in ruby they don't tend to trigger the uh, rain sensing wipers unless you're going pretty fast and it streaks it up the screen and then the rain sensors pick it up this circuit's quite similar to, to ruby ruby if you're not familiar with is my other uh, yellow gxl or my, my yellow gxl my other gxl car which had quite a lot of electronics built into it you'll see that on project ruby videos early on in the youtube channel Okay, so we can now actually put the 12 volts on it and we'll see, watch it go because it's, it's actually running. I shall now get a 12 volt cable in front of you, which I'll just bring in front of the screen. Okay, let's do it. I'm just watching, I'm very careful about filming today. Only need to briefly press it. So we now arm. There's our first squirt of water. Auto sensors arm, second squirt of water. Wait now off for the water so wipers everything's idle nothing's happening we're going to look for this post wipe done that's the end of it circuit disarms now that now it's now completely idle however what does stay on is the rain sensing wiper is now armed until i turn off the ignition that would be or i can put the stalk up in the middle reason why you've got a little bit more control over the rain sensing wipers i find them very reliable okay but there may be instances when you don't want them on. Um, I have, I'm trying to think of an example of that when I've been driving Ruby where I, thought, where I put the stalk back into the middle. Can't actually think of any 
it's sometimes if your blade's funny you can get a smear that it, it can't get out of the way and they'll go even when it's not raining not very often this happens but i found that when you get some window glass and clean it back down it's all right so you may get that situation you may just not want them on all right and then so you so you just put the stalk back to the middle if you hit another load of rain you can always bring the stalk back down and because it, you've not turned off your ignition yet that's still active so they'll come straight back in no need to press the washer pump anymore because it stays locked on for the duration of that trip okay so i'm just trying to think of any other things i've discovered when i've used them on on ruby because they're fitted to ruby um no you they'll you can leave the stalk down all the time because when it stops raining the wipers do switch off and then you won't hear from them again occasionally they'll give a spurious wipe when there doesn't seem to be any rain but but, but not not very often certainly not enough to make them a problem and reliability wise i'd rate them maybe eight nine out of ten which is pretty good for something as sensitive as a rain sensing system given that a lot of cars um these days i have well maybe that the very recent ones are different but certainly when they first came out i had a lot of stories that they were unreliable if you know how to work them you know how to use them and you've got a bit more control over them that's at fingertips you tend to just get them working in harmony with you as a driver and that's certainly what i found again mentioning ruby a lot here but as a driver in ruby doing long distances i'm up to 20,000 miles maybe more now in that car a lot of that motorway miles uh, i found them great especially if you get a heavy downpour and they're on if they're not i mean if they're not on and you hit that switch in your arm and they drop in and a wagon's spraying up they do do dual speed so they do clear it out of the way and it just saves that annoying reaching over to the dash all the time for your uh, wipers i wouldn't do without them now that's just why i've spent so much time this has been two days work to build this that's why i spent so much time on this system because it's one of those features which i find i couldn't live without once it once i've used it on the car same with the heated seats same with the cruise control there's these things which i'd miss them if they weren't there indeed going back into swampy the blue gxl that i built that one um doesn't have these on it and i do miss them but i'm not going to retrofit it stays as it is so that's that circuit if i power off at the pad transformer on the on the bench the um, power pack you'll see if it drops out of course the intermittent comes back on straight away the clock comes back on intermittent is only on at the moment simply because i've not got it wired to the actual switch it's just hardwired into the board yet that'll have a wire in a minute being soldered on coming off which goes into the loom so what's happening over there you may ask in yellow that's the second system that it takes up more room than it needs to okay it, it could have i could have compacted it into this area on the vero board like i have here but it ended up i had this board space spare and i thought well do i want to really crack that board now down there and i'd, I'd run a couple of um, resistors up this end and i thought these can go side by side these two timers i thought i'll leave it like that so it's sparsely populated that doesn't matter right what is it this is just the post wash wipe circuit that's all it is nothing else looks a lot for what it is um programmable again the, the post wash time by connecting the relevant pin on another decade counter here i think i've got it set on pin eight which equates to about six seconds on this clock speed i can adjust that clock speed which will adjust that time hold on and reposition myself behind the tripod for you trying to keep you uh, with some steady camera work been some uh, critique on keeping i'm going to try a different film style in the next series of films just keeping it less moving around and stuff like that i should know better appreciate the uh, comments i've had on that thank you for that we're going to activate this circuit all it does it just uh, it shares this relay there's a wash wipe relay here it just it just activates the wash wipe relay and then after you finish the cycle it gives a post wipe now the challenge on this circuit was that if i held my foot down on the washer jets um i don't want this timer circuit to begin its count until i let off the switch okay till i'm i'm, I'm de depressed on the switch because otherwise if i held the switch on the uh, washer jet 
switch down for six seconds this would kick in so you need to get it so this only starts to begin its timing when you've released the foot pedal switch and that's what I had to do so the, the chip is, is uh, muted if you will by the fact that the washer jet switch is pressed and until I undo that the chip is then unmuted it's actually called uh, reset there's a reset pin here and it, it'll hold that reset pin high until I let go of the washer jet switch then it begins its count based on this clock not that one they can't share a clock unfortunately because um, the way I, I wired it it didn't like the fact that I was sharing this clock because this circuit's quite foolproof um, there's two relays one's a self latching relay and one's what you call a cancel relay this relay I think it's this one could be the left one one of these as soon as I hit the switch the washer jets locks on it waits then till you release the washer jet then the chip begins to count the time impulse is coming out of this separate time clock gets round to an appropriate point activates the um, wiper relay only not that's the wash wipe relay that's the wiper only relay activates that relay for post wash wipe so it's post PWW post wash wipe and that's all that does then it's cancelled out I'll show you you're working now by connecting the 12 volt feed to it I've actually not soldered the wire in it requires an input and an injection 12 volts here watch it go lock on circuit locked it's already begun counting now because I've pulled the wire off and see about six seconds before it uh, drops into the kill out relay here there it goes knocks the circuit out that relay would have activated let's watch again so one quick squirt of the jets spin spin them jets off we go keep your eye on this one as well this one's going to cut in any second now there it goes post wash then cancel the system then it's locked out now I haven't got the um, I haven't got the relay sorry the switch wipe I've just got this I've got to be careful not to put it on the wrong pin but can you see the washer LED lit now uh, my foot is permanently on so that LED in the roughly in the middle of your screen is that imagine that being the washer motor going so spraying water all over the screen at the moment that's a long press and even when we go beyond the six seconds I can't hold it down properly sorry let's try again even when we go beyond the six seconds it's not going to do the post wipe until I release this my foot off the pedal then it starts to count so one and two and three and four and five and six and seven six and a half seven kill out done post wipe done that's what that does you, again you can get that in a car you can get it in one little hella relay perhaps with about five six pins on the relays if you can find the wiring diagrams for them for just that system but it wouldn't have all this built into one handy unit and sharing the relays with all this now on one board I'm able to just bring out much less wiring because these relays are sharing all the same connection wires that are coming in they're in parallel with each other so you've got the actual pump itself the washer pump that's going to be one wire out for the washer pump because the other side's ground of the pump so one just one wire out for the washer just one wire in from the foot operated switch and then two wires out for the wiper to parallel across the um, the park switch of the, the windscreen washer motor in the engine bay so a total of probably only with the power feed itself you may only have six wires running this whole thing nice and compacted instead of having relays all over the place you would have needed three different relays of course they've got to count these two wires for this but six plus the um, potentiometer control for the variable intermittent speed and that's a neat little system um, I think it might be an idea to fit a fuse to each individual circuit here then you don't lose the whole lot if the fuse goes down although you've always got your, your dashboard operated switch so you'd never lose your wipers because this works in tandem it doesn't replace it works on top of the whole thing's optional none of it needs to be used with your stalk you can leave it the stalk in the middle the cruise stalk and none of this is, is um, being activated so you can just deactivate it if it fails let's say some of my circuits are built wrong 
which I doubt they are because I've done all this before. This is really just basic stuff. BC108 transistor, 1N4002 diode there, a 1K, a 10K, 4K7, some LEDs with 470 ohm resistors on, two, three, four finder relays, some, some smaller ones there, a triple five timer, 10K pot, another 108, 220 microfarad capacitor, um, 470 ohm going for an LED on that for the output of the clock on the um, intermittent. These are off the shelf ready built um, square wave generators, two of them, the three quid each, so it's just cheaper buying them than building it on the board and it takes up less space. All those parts, uber reliable, CMOS system running between you know, 5 and 12 volts, it'll, it'll run up to 16 volts. Yes, we'll have a regulator on it, 7812 voltage regulator to um, run the whole show. A couple of fuses put into it, into a box, out with a wiring lumina Molex plug connectors to make it neat and removable for servicing, and you're off, you're good to go. So um, that's it. I hope that makes some kind of sense. It's very difficult for me to explain these tech videos. This will be a standalone video on its own. It won't be part of the Ruby build series directly. These are spin-off films for the hardcore enthusiasts as opposed to watching the project build. A lot of people, when's the car coming back? When you're welding this? When you're bolting on that? When you're building the engine? Some people aren't interested in electronics. Some people are. You can get a mix. You can't please everyone all the time. Some, some of the time, of course. So why not just do these spin-off films and then you check, you can pick, and I won't call them uh, Project Bramble. Sometimes I keep calling it Ruby because I get mixed up. Project Bramble. I'll just uh, have them as separate films. That way you can dip, dive in whenever you want. I appreciate all the comments and feedback that are coming in about the electronics. Of course this time, um, keeping the camera rock steady and just basically narration to you not much to watch really um, but we can we can move into shot now I'm gonna zoom you back so you've had your time steady there there's the board we've done all the systems um, we want to now check for if there's any interference on the system so now I'm gonna do uh, I'm gonna do actually this wouldn't actually be possible because of the stalk I have to simulate the stalk switch next really to get a true idea because when you build something like this you can find that you don't cover all angles of operation so I might have my foot on the switch and my hand on the stalk pushing up and it may come up with an anom anomaly that you haven't spotted because I'm doing it one at a time here but you've got to be make it foolproof so if someone pushes up the stalk presses at the same time as the wipers on the dash on the rain sensor are going crazy that this doesn't lock itself into some kind of crazy loop. It shouldn't do because the systems are actually separate in the way that they work. There is no real communication from this side to that apart from it shares one of the relays. So it shouldn't do. But you have to think about that as well. It's possible. The Vero board, we just about crammed it in. Let's switch off while I move this. You know, I mean, it's, it's at up the patch wires underneath as well because you just run out of tracks um, so it starts to become I mean if you look at that you think what the hell you know and it does get complicated it's hard keeping it neat I think that I've kept it reasonably neat there and tell me what you think about this for our wash wipe fully automatic system for project bramble built in a, in a couple of days on the fly as I went along you know um, they're up and running all the systems are go I think we go yeah we go here for the uh, wash wipe hmm that's it all seems to work as it should we just need to now solder wires onto those relays to get connected into the actual wiper motor into the, the loom of the car and the washer motor that's in the loom of the car we'll have a look at boxing up as well transistors down there some diodes to stop the uh, the back EMF on the relays and that's it that's where we're at all running uh, module wise you're up to speed then because we've covered the um, the multifunction warning lamp it was just that we needed to get this built and, and what a mission that it was you know uh, 
it's an electronics build we have got some other stuff to show you in the workshop but that's all part of project bramble episode 34 this is the spin-off film so that i don't jam up episode 34 with tons of electronics you can you can you can see on the thumbnail oh it's electronics vid i don't want to get heavily involved in that and then wait till the, the bramble vids come out that's the idea that's what we've been doing i'll have a little um tidy up and then uh, we'll close uh, do a re uh, end of uh, shot review end of project review with some cables fitted to this and uh, the bench clear so we can get an overview at the end of the film but the bench is nice and clear all tools away ready to start another session and we'll just do a little bit of wiring tidy up too on this module for long distance for long distance microphone work you being that far away from the camera is hard because um, you get a drop in the volume I need a mic those cameras don't have a mic input on them and I'm not a professional channel we're not paid we haven't got a cameraman so we're stuck we're stuck with what we can go with I've no big type posh camera Bramble's drained all the money there's nothing left except to use what we've got in fact in this drawer we've got we've got cameras for when this if this one fails although they probably won't fail as much now because the um oh there's no welding to burn out the lenses you know so that's it this video can go straight up we're not waiting time scale wise we're just launching as we go so it's vlog so this video is going out tonight which is friday night you're going to get it at some weird time and you're going to think, what the hell's going on? Another, yet another film. Well, why not? Um, it's to try out and to see if working that far away from the camera, you can see me. And I know I've done the welding on the Bramble with the tripod that far. But you tend to talk louder when you're doing welding stuff. When you're doing electronics, it gets you just in the quiet area, you know? So I just want to make sure that this camera is capable of doing it and I have to squat down so you can see me there I push you even further away I could try tilting you up if you want to try tilting you up get it that way I suppose let's try and get comfy so yes what do you think of this module overkill crazy what the hell are you playing at well I know it's not because I've driven the cars, I've driven and I've found out what I like and this does what I like when it comes to wipers, you know, and uh, it's a little bit of a sculpture isn't it really. So we're trying out, uh, ch ch is it Chish, Chilsh, One Chilsh, I Chilsh, his idea, very good, thanks for that idea. I commented last night, um, we were doing the night shift at work, so I commented last night and I was wide awake on, on that uh, clip, so I, I gave a reply, and he suggested bring. Doesn't that work better? Yeah, I think you're bang on there. Little things all the time, bring the stuff to the screen so that you're not, you move, not the camera move. I think that's actually an old, very, very old, if not since cameras were ever made principle. And I've forgotten about it. I should know better after all the filming that I've done. But the reason probably why you get this a lot of the time, this filming business, about forgetting. Well, AIM, I'm not gyroed up on these cameras, so they've not got those lovely gyroscopic um, sensors that the iPhones have. But who's going to use the, the five £800 iPhone to film them welding a car? No, because <laughs> they're not going to last five minutes. As soon as those iron fines go into the iPhone, bang, it's finished end off and who's going to carry an 800 pound iphone around for camera work it's just not the right thing to do so you've got to get a camera yeah and and i haven't got image stabilization because it's it just it does have an electronic in like uh, backwards electronic image stabilizer on it it's not as good as the gyro ones so you get these situations where um the early principle of bringing keeping a camera and let the, the the subject move is an old principle and I've got a book, a filmmaking book, which I should read a bit more and uh, 
it does say it in that as well. So it's a really good point that Chilsh May, I think he's called Chilsh. Um, and that is what I've tried to do with this film, just for a bit of a chat, just for a bit of an experiment, just to keep the channel going as well. It's hard work with YouTube, you know. And these videos take, well, the more I ramble on, the longer they're going to take, aren't they? But these videos take ages. I think I explained that, a lot of that to people at the NEC, and uh, nice to meet everybody there. And um, you could talk all day. I could probably talk all day on, on this video now, because a lot of you didn't get a chance to come down and see us on the stand, so maybe this is a substitute for that. But it was, um, it was one of those situations where you think, well, okay, I can do the vlog, and um, it's the next best thing to us meeting up and having a chat. Well, the film book that I've got mentions all these kind of things about angles, techniques, so the reason for this upload and this rambling on is to test out some of those principles and just see if I'm going to be happy doing it and try and retrain myself and get back into the habit of presenting the show in this way. Uh, because we're getting some decent views and I think we're 18,500 subs. We need to get more of course because I can't work it out, right? You spend, well, you know, built up, there's a lot there, isn't there? Okay, there's a lot of work going into that, right? A lot of detailed work that I've had to think through and, and make sure that everything, I've got to imagine myself driving the car, imagine what I want it to do, what I want the wipers to do. I mean, did we show you the hot wash? I'm sure, I think I did show you the look of the hot wash. Wow, look at this. This is the hot wash. You might think again, someone's going to, I don't want no smart ass coming on. Now, I haven't had any, there's been no smart asses ever on my channel, right? There's not, I can't think of one in, in, 15 years some hate, haters, but I'm not any smart asses. So I don't want them to start now saying we don't need this, because we do need this. Look at them beefy cables. Um, that's part of my Continental Touring pack. Them jets are going to be enemy turbocharged. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I think I'm starting to warm up now, I think you notice. It takes me a while to get into the groove. It takes me a while to get sort of moving. I mean, it's late at night at the moment. Sorry, no, it was late at night last night. I've probably only had five hours sleep. Your brain just needs to wake up a little bit. It's not often I do the night shifts. Now then, what was I saying? Yeah, the hot wash and this, I do need them. I do like them. And a lot of thought went into them, right? But then you get your views and then... Someone does like some unboxing film with like 5 million views for unboxing a blooming, I don't know, a Christmas tree, you know? Unbelievable. One end of the frozen dolls, you know? Wow, millions, how wonderful! Wow, wow, millions and millions! You do all this, there's tumbleweed. Lots of it. So, the hardcore electronics guys will know what I mean. That's it. That's where we're at. Did we mention the USB? We did, didn't we? We've already had a full-on video with a USB. There it is. And this actually provides my background music entertainment whilst I'm... Um, hold on, make sure that's disconnected. Whilst I'm... Whilst I'm working, I've got an MP3 stick in on the bench, giving me... Music! Giving me everything... everything I want. In this case, Marillion. Oh, as he knows, you know. So, another great module. I mean, look at my messy bench as well. See, this is behind the scenes stuff. Pete sees messy bench. Pete sees got the bench. Do you know why the bench gets messy? Right, the bench gets messy because you just you just unfold with the job. It, it just. Uh, I come up with a sketch and then you start to solder the stuff on. Then you need some wire cuts, so they go there. Then you need some resistors, and I won't put that back because I'll need them in a minute. And then the next thing, boom! It's incredible, really. There's some kind of science like knots in rope. The same applies to your tools on the bench. It's like it just grows, you know. He knows, you know. Uh, I've got to clear the bench up. This is me over the, over light. Over what the hell? 
the overhead light works very well. Eyes aren't as good as what they used to be. I spend more time with my glasses on than my glasses off, although I'd like to not, but and these now need adjusting. These only last um Oh, my eyes are so sore as well. These only last a couple of years, don't they? A lot of you out there probably got glasses. These are very focal ones. I'm all right without glasses long distance, just can't see a thing. So these do what you've got to do. USB systems built. I'm rambling. Modules built for the wipers. The multifunction warning light we talked about. <laughs> Here it is. It's so neat. It's so neat. It's so neat. It's so neat. All done in one easy pluggable into the car system. There's your sensors. There's the two. There's the frost. There's the um, no. It's so neat that the oil temp and fuel are all in one little place. No need for wires going all over the place. What a great little unit. Multifunction one lamp off the shelf. Then can be put away. Great. And the same is now going to happen with this. I'm going to finish, well, I'll, I'll, I've done my bramble ramble, I'm now going, going to wire the, um, the actually part of the loom onto the back of this, and then I'm going to go and uh, meditate for an hour and declutter my mind, because my mind is overloaded with, I can see, when you close your eyes, you can see the circuits, and you know what, if you, rip, if you get good, I've been doing it a while, um, if you get good, you can... Hang on, let's try and get... I don't want to be in darkness for you. This is the only problem. We need to invest in light. YouTube pays some money for all the work that we do on YouTube. Come on. If you um, visualise the circuit when you close your eyes, when you dream, you can actually lucidly dream the circuits. You can actually design them while you're asleep. I know it sounds crazy, but it, it actually works. Um, let's say you're trying to solve one of the outputs here and you want to, you're trying to think through how to get it to do two wipes then one then a wash whatever we, we've done it actually haven't we but let's say you're trying to um you can go to sleep and actually solve it as long as you've got the pen and notepad by your bed and then write it down i've done that a lot and um, i've even done some rough designs while i've been asleep as you can tell <laughs> oh my god right uh yeah that's it. I'm trying to fill up the time just to, to waste time. What a t no, there is, there is no time to waste. Time's mega valuable. Your time is mega valuable, so I appreciate you, you watching. But um, we do have leisure time, and a lot of people do say, well, uh, we don't like watching telly. I neither do I. I haven't watched telly since I came back from Italy in Swampy. I won't even, I won't even switch the waste of time thing on. The complete waste of time. Brainwashing waste of time. Negative, 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 negative television. Negative news, negative television, isn't it? In a joke. What a joke. It's not worth it, is it? You can go on YouTube and find old documentaries from like the 60s and the 50s and the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, whatever you want. It's all sorts on there, isn't it? Good. We can see called TV City. Let's wire up. Right, I've got a nice project box for it. Seems to fit in there quite nicely. Look at that. All I've got to do is connect this Molex up. We've started making the, the hole for the Molex now. That fits in there. That'll give us a multi plug. And then we're good to go. We're just going to get the final wire sorted out, but I'll leave that for now. That sits nicely alongside our mp3 that we already done and then just across the way is of course this so we'll put them all together this is the end of the day now for me so i'm going to do some youtube in yeah okay we are doing really great progress with electronics build and that is it for the day that's clicking away we'll switch off that now that's the end of that And we're done. Do that uh, later on.